And welcome back to coverage here of the Neon Dynasty Championship. Marshall Cyclop with Cedric Phillips. We're ready for round number three. This is the last round of Alchemy for the day before we transition over to Historic a little bit later on. And in the feature this time, it's pretty incredible, Cedric. Sometimes, you know, when you play these big tournaments, random pairings result in a whole lot of, of nonsense. This time, though, we've got our last two world champions in the feature. What are the chances of that? I mean, come on. No big deal, really. Just, you know, two average average folks just casting some spells. What's the big deal? That's right. We've got Yuta Takahashi and Paulo Vitor Damodorosa squared off against each other in the feature. Again, this is the last round of Alchemy for the day. We'll be playing more Alchemy tomorrow and uh, and on Sunday as well. So uh, you'll get a chance to kind of settle in. What what has been your initial thoughts on it, Cedric? Uh, you know, this is the first time we've debuted it at a high-level event like this. Well, it's been fun to watch. I mean, I, I like most formats in Magic anyway, um, because they're all just kind of their own different types of animals. Um, but coming into this particular week, and again, it was a really unexplored format in my estimation, and knowing that runes was going to be a big deal coming in, were people going to try to beat it or were they going to try to join it? Uh, and what we're seeing now is that people are trying to beat it and they are succeeding in doing so. Now, again, small sample size theater. It's only three rounds of alchemy. We'll have more numbers at the end of the day. But thus far, that, uh, that rune stack has not impressed me, but maybe a chance for redemption. That's right. We get one more data point right now, Cedric, because in the feature, Yuta Takahashi has decided to bring this rune stack that the Japanese team came up with on the other side, Paulo Vitor Domino Rosta came up with a deck that maybe was just tailor-made to destroy it. It's the mono white deck that just has tons of stuff that interacts very favorably for it against runes specifically. And you would think, given these two players' history, which we know quite a bit about, Marshall, you and I have been doing this for a long time, mm -hmm. Paulo, mono white, yeah, that's not a thing that happens often. And Yuta Takahashi, not blue cards. Well, I guess technically this deck, I mean, look, there's not an island per se, but a lot of these cards can trip. So it's kind of like what he likes to do, kind of, sort of. That's kind of, well, I thought he was just going to concede right there. I, I, when I see that screen come up, my heart just stops. Yeah. I'm like, don't oh, give up yet. Yeah, your hand's good. What are you doing? No, but... But uh, this is not the kind of deck that we oftentimes see Takahashi play either. So um, not the kind of styles that these players prefer. But hey, look, formats dictate what you can and cannot do. And we are seeing this style of deck succeed uh, for players in this format, at least coming into the event. You know, you and I have covered Paulo a lot. We both know him personally. Yeah. How, how big of a factor do you think it was that he gets to play a card with himself on it in the deck? Look, and as all I, of a sudden, I, he's like, hey, White Weenie, been here the whole time, you know? As I've gotten to know Paul a little bit better, I'm going to say as a non-zero factor. <laughs> so non-zero. <laughs> oh, too good. <laughs> Just too good. He's got hopeful initiate to kick things off. Kami of Transients on the other side for Takahashi. So good start from both players. Here comes Generous Visitor to follow up, as well as a Rune of Speed. That is going to give it a counter, plus one, plus zero, oh, and it's going to get haste on top of all of that, not to mention a card into hand, and that's going to allow him to slam with both. Down to 14 goes Paulo Vitor, who draws, well, the card that is really the talk of the town right now, Archon of Emeria, for its ability to... Mm, shutdown might be strong, but severely hinder Yuta Takahashi's game plan. Yeah, but the question right now is, as Paulo has to think about his turn, look, if Archon of Miria was a great play to make this turn, I think Paulo would have already made it. But the problem with Archon of Miria right now is that it's a little slow to the battlefield. You've already got here in Takahashi a pretty good battlefield. So instead of going to the Archon, which does severely hamper runes, it's time to actually eliminate one of these creatures. And that's exactly what Skyclave Apparition is going to do. So... It's not Archon's time to shine just yet. Yeah, interesting choice there as well for Paulo as he opts to take out the smaller but perhaps higher upside creature there with the Generous Visitor. But generally speaking, when Mono White has a chance to take out a Kami of Transients, they will do so with a Skyclave Apparition as it permanently exiles it. It will not be coming back under any circumstance. But it looks like Paulo decided, all right, well, I'm under enough pressure here that I just need to take down this generous visitor. It also gives him the slight upside that if his apparition were to leave the battlefield, somehow it's only a 1-1-1 back for 
Looks like we're going to speed up this Kami now, draw a card. Another generous visitor has been picked up now too, so perhaps we'll see Takahashi deploy that as well. We are seeing, you know, we are seeing right now, Marshall, a more traditional draw from runes. Yes, it doesn't have the champion, it doesn't have the reducer yet, or anything like that, but this deck can kind of do its game plan a multitude of ways. Uh, and right now, it's uh, it's kind of firing on all cylinders. It really is. There's five more damage coming in. Paulo Vitor down to nine. Keeping it simple, here comes Generous Visitor to follow up as he passes the turn back. Yuta staring down at Rune of Speed and Skyclave Apparition in hand to go with a land that Paulo knows about. Paulo has a ton of action in his hand. In his hand. He's going to go with Inquisitor Captain, but it's interesting because, you know, he really does kind of need to just maximize what he's doing each turn to try to keep up with Yuta at this point. Yeah, Inquisitor Captain there is hoping to try to find one of those three drops that can actually eliminate a creature. So if you take a look at Paulo's deck list, he does have four copies of Skyclave Apparition, one on the battlefield, so there would have been three there. Uh, the Archons, which are not really what he's looking for, and only a singleton copy of Brutal Cathar, where some players are playing two and three mm -hmm. copies. So Kami of Transience is a real issue here, mostly because of its trample. Uh, and the inability to really slow that thing down right now alongside Trample, Paulo's kind of struggling. <laughs> we got to see it here, said. Paulo's playing Apollo, elite spellbinder on the battlefield. How many people have gotten a chance to actually do that, play a card that they helped design with their own likeness on it after becoming world champion or, or in the past having won an invitational? That has to feel so cool. To, I'll play Paulo. And I am Paulo. What up? Yeah, I'm mean, talk about hashtag goals. Look, dude, one day, that hopefully. is so sweet. I mean, that's just achievement unlocked at the highest level for a magic player. In the meantime, this spellbinder does put a tax on Rune of Speed, leaving Skyclave Apparition, the other land, and then the freshly drawn land in hand now for Utah. Oddly enough, though, this Rune of Speed is going to cost four mana, but that is still doable at this stage of things. And if you do mm. cast that Rune of Speed, it's going to be your entire turn, sure, but you're going to trigger Generous Visitor. You're going to trigger Kami. You're going to get to draw a card. And though it's an expensive rune, and I mean very expensive because those things can be free sometimes, that might just be the best thing to do this turn. It's taking a look, and it does look like that's exactly what he's considering here, said. Yeah, he's lining up a rune of speed. There it is. Vroom. Tax be paid, he says. This does give him an op option to draw a one mana spell and still be able to play it. Which he does not do. He's got a trio of pathways now in hand. Branch Loft, Craig Crown, and Needle Verge. Take your pick. In the meantime, what does the attack look like here for Utah? So if you rock and roll with the 6-5 here, there's going to be some double blocks that do take place, right? And the Kami will come back because a rune will go into the graveyard. But this is one of the issues, I would say, with the rune stack, is that for as great as these runes are, haste, trample, uh, and we can't forget about lifelink, these runes do not grant first strike, they don't grant flying, they don't grant unblockables. So yeah, we've seen players go towards death touch. We've talked about that already today. And sometimes it can just be, I got a bunch of idiots out here to block, so... We've seen that. Want to too. attack? Yeah, yeah. And, and there's no good attack to be had here. Yeah, so pass the turn back. That's got to be such a bummer for Utah with a 6 5 trampler out, and he just says go with his opponent on nine life. Paulo draws a, a land for the turn, and he's surveying the scene. He's going to go with Inquisitor Captain number two. He's getting these out of his hand, and then he double spell. And look at that Skyclave Apparition off of the captain is going to send that Kami of Transients packing for good. And look at who's attacking now. It's Paulo Vitor Domitorosa. He's even going to get in with Hopeful Initiate and the training trigger here. Yeah, a trigger that doesn't come up a ton, but is going to come up now to make that into a 2-3. Maybe this Skyclave Apparition is thinking about attacking. And now what we're going to get to the point of the game, Marshall, where now Archon of Amiria is actually going to be relevant next turn for Paulo if he has the opportunity to cast it. Because... I don't know. We keep talking about this, you and I. This whole uh, this whole showdown of the Skulls card. This would be the great time to draw it. Totally. Still reloads your hand in some ways, lets you guarantee action for the next few turns, or at least give a really good chance of it. But man, Archon really does cripple it on chapters two and three. Here it comes, though. Three creatures into the red zone, including the Skyclave Apparition. 
with the uh, generous visitor. And it looks like Yuta is just going to take it all. Falls down to nine. Land go. And yep. there's another land off the top here for Takashi. Yep. And he's going to scoop them up. That's going to be it. Concede button has been pressed. And uh, we're going to start consulting sideboards here. Dude, it has been a rough, rough day to be a runes player. Yeah, I mean, we had a slight advantage bar there towards you to Takahashi because he had that big creature on the battlefield, but that Inquisitor Captain just flipped the script on that game, finding another copy of Skyclave Apparition, and then that was that. And here, here's even worse news, Marshall, is that things don't get better for runes after sideboarding. It's Mono White. You can see from Mono White, there's another copy of Brutal Cathar. There are multiple copies of Portable Hole. The Wandering Emperor can play, play a role in a matchup that is creature-based in a very meaningful way. So those cards are easily coming in. I'm curious if we were to talk to Paula right now, how how painful is it to sideboard yourself out? He left That's, one in. Well, I would do that. Yeah, you know. <laughs> is that why? You know, yeah. like he just couldn't take the last one out? Like, Yeah, you know, just having to, you know what? I'm not good enough for this matchup is a tough thing to say out loud. So yeah. you got to move yourself to the sideboard. But you, you take a look at the cards that Takahashi's bringing in, Ranger's Class, Skyclave Apparition, the Wander Emperor. Th those cards are fine, um, but... I think that Paulo gets the better end of it after Cyborg, and he's already up a game. Also worth noting, and you don't know if Paulo knows this or not, but Rune of Speed is coming out of the deck, so really can't uh, take anyone by surprise with a hasty Rune-type game plan here in the Cyborg game for Takahashi. Takahashi's ready to rumble. Paulo's still putting the last tweaks on his sideboard plan. You know, you mentioned he's got even more that he can do, but it has to feel like you're almost pre-boarded against if you're sitting in Takahashi's seat with the amount of hate cards coming down that just put a huge dent in your plan. That looks like he did end up cutting all of the spellbinders, by the way, so he, he benched himself. <laughs> Game number two underway here. Paulo Vitor Damodarosa versus Yuta Takahashi. Again, these are our last two world champions. Paulo two years ago, or two, two championships ago, and uh, Yuta won the last one. We're going to be putting six more people into the world championship for this season uh, by the end of the weekend. Yes, we are. I can't wait. Yeah, that's a huge spot. You know, when we get to Sunday, if you can make it to the top six, spots at the end of the tournament then uh, you're going to be qualified and that's a a major life goal for any top level magic player just that right there jukai naturalist kicks off the festivities here for takahashi is facing down thalia guardian of thraven and hopeful initiate both cards that have application against this and look at that the combo is on the battlefield too He's got Runeforge Champion and Jukai Naturalist. He's going to go grab himself a rune. He didn't actually have one in hand. So that would be the first one. Normally, he'd be able to just fire that right off, but Dahlia says, mm -mm -mm -mm. Yeah, the, the the white cards, as far as the hate cards are concerned, are really flowing right now. Thalia's messing things up. Uh, Archon of Myria has just been drawn. That's going to mess things up. Skyclave Apparition is an answer to either one of those cards. That's going to mess things up. But also, one thing I want to kind of point to right now is, Take a look at Takahashi's mana base. He's got a white, he's got a green, he's got a red. Double white, not so much. Be able to play multiple green spells in one turn, again, it's going to have a little bit of a struggle here, um, depending on what Paulo's turn is. So this is also one of the trade-offs with this Naya Runes deck. Uh, you are three color. Your mana is pretty good, but it can backfire sometimes. <laughs> So a one drop that can destroy enchantments, a mm -hmm. two drop that makes it so you can't cast very many spells on your turn, and a three drop that literally makes it so you can only cast one spell on your turn, your move. Yep. <laughs> Meanwhile, Takahashi has really one of the best draws you can get here, right, with the Naturalist, the Runeforge Champion, Rune in hand. He even has a pair of Generous Visitor in hand as well, and it's just going to be crippled. Yeah, it's just getting brick walled right now. He doesn't really have a great avenue to go down. Again, when he made that choice with that pathway, and this is what makes pathways so compelling from a coverage standpoint, which is, look, you got to get it right. And I'm not saying that Takahashi got it wrong because he has showed out a skulls in hand, but you have to get it right. Um, and so right now, the trade-off is, is the inability to play a Skyclave Apparition. So did not draw a white source, picked up another rune, and now I guess we're going to go beatdowns. Kind of funny how it works. He's able to pay red for a green rune because he's just paying the one tax 
yeah. on Thalia. Otherwise, it would be free. It's like, how do we get here, <laughs> right? Like, what layers needed to happen so that you could tap one red mana and play a rune out of your hand? It's like, well, we're here. It does get in for three. That's also lifelink and trample. So 23 to 17 now in favor of Takahashi. But you can't feel like he he's in a good position at this point. He no. currently can't deploy those apparitions. And as long as that's the case, those lock spells for Paulo Vitor are just going to slow down Takahashi to a crawl. And this is exactly why you choose Mono White for this particular weekend. You come into the event, you know in runes is a big deal. And one thing I always like to say about competitive magic tournaments of this level, you got to win the matches you're supposed to win. If you're Paulo, you came into this event, you chose the deck that you're playing in Mono White, and you said, I want to get paired against runes. I know mm -hmm. I have a good matchup against runes. He's already up a game. And in order to win tournaments, which, oh, by the way, Paulo's really good at, you got to win the matchups you're supposed to win. The advantage is very quickly creeping his way because now he's got his lock pieces on the battlefield. Now the next step is, let me get your real cards off the battlefield. And then you really can't do anything to catch up because you can only play one spell a turn. Yep, Skyclave Apparition is going to take care of the Jukai Naturalist and Yuta Takahashi draws what has to be one of the worst top decks in his whole deck. It is what? Showdown of the Skulls number That's all we've two. been talking about, Marshall! I know. It's a five-mana showdown that doesn't hardly do anything. There's his other white source, so he'll be happy to have seen that. It will ETB tap, but doesn't matter anyway. He couldn't play another spell, so he's going to have to just settle for Rune on Runeforge Champion pass the turn. Ugh. Yeah, that that white pathway uh, in the infamous words of Jojo might be too little too late. That needed to show up like a turn ago in order to Skyclave plus play another spell. Now what we're probably going to see is Skyclave the next turn. But speaking of which, we're going to see Skyclave this turn. Take care of this champion. Uh, Yuta doesn't even have a battlefield and. Yeah, I mean, I, I love Mono White, say, so... You know what I would say, Cedric? I would say that the Runeforge champion is not the only champion that just got taken care of with that uh, Skyclave <laughs> apparition, because I think the uh, the reigning world champion is about to get uh, killed here. He's trying to make a comeback by taking out the Archon with Skyclave apparition of his own and then following up with Generous Visitor. That's going to give Paulo a little bit of pause about how to approach these next few turns. But as you can see... His hand very strong. Now the Sigardian Evangel is available. He can tap down both creatures and get in for a big attack. He could go for Inquisitor Captain and try to just build out his board. Uh, the Thalia is redundant in hand. He also does have access to Portable Hole here mm -hmm. if he'd like to take down something. But it's going to be Evangel. Go get another Evangel and then tap down both of your things and slam. And he's going to have Yuta Takahashi very much on the ropes at this point. Yeah, this is this is just it, it's just it's just too much as far as going wide is concerned, right? So now you get you get in here for an attack for eight points of damage. You see the life totals here, seventeen to five, and now it's gonna take. I mean, it's gonna take one heck of a turn here. Now, you and I have mentioned so many times about showdown of the skulls being able to get these runes players back into the game, but it's not about that right now. Um, there are no runes to really have some kind of crazy runes turn going on right now. So right. if you're Takahashi, you have to ask yourself. What the heck can I even do to get myself out of this thing? Yeah, the the only way that I've seen this deck come back from this position is it involves a lifelink and trample creature, and it involves mm -hmm. a heck of a lot of spells cast in one turn. And usually, you know, there's going to be need to be a Kami of Transients uh, on the battlefield. Perhaps Generous Visitor could get the job done. But as you mentioned, th th none of those pieces are in place here for Utah. You know, he's supposed to be leaning on the showdown of the skulls at this point in the game but he's so far behind that's not even an option he just has to dump out these cards onto the battlefield and, and pray yeah now the question is with that skyclave apparition taking care of in a skyclave apparition and giving him a 3-3 three, three illusion has that done enough to try to stabilize this game at this point you're gonna see depends portable on hole. if this 3-3 three, three illusion stays on the battlefield i suppose yeah portable <laughs> hole kind of answered that question for us a little bit it there it did yeah that illusion slipped and fell down a hole and now everything once again is crashing into the red zone here for paulo vitor domita rosa he's doing his best uh, cedric phillips impersonation here just right click attack all hey i'm a fan I'm and a it fan. Looks like it's working out pretty well for him here. He, he's lined up right now to trade off Sigardian Evangels for generous visitors, which is certainly advantageous here for Paulo. Yeah, here's a whammy. You're hoping that Iganjo doesn't actually rear its ugly head, but it's there, and it's only going to take two to channel because of the Thalia being on the battlefield, which means that combat is going to go beautifully here for Paulo. He's got everything. Yuta has nothing. 
That's right. Jukai Naturalist and Rune of Sustenance are the types of cards that he needed to come back last turn, but he doesn't have it. And uh, our non-reigning world champion 